Hey Fair Fam, and welcome back to a brand new video, 15 food items to never feed your ferrets. And don't worry, this list is going to be unique, so you're not gonna see the most common ones that you see on lists like these, such as chocolate, xylitol, ice cream, stuff like that, because we all already know that those things are bad, well, most of us anyways, and if you don't, that's totally okay. This list is going to be a little bit more unique, but first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, consider becoming a member of the channel and joining our ferret advocacy group, links will be below. And don't forget to snag some brand new merch, you guys. I'm super excited about that. I'm probably going to be wearing them in like every video from now on. I hope you guys don't mind. Oh, and you might be wondering what that big rash is on my neck. Please ignore it. It is my eczema and it is flaring up today and I didn't want to cover it with makeup or else it would stain my brand new shirt. So that's how we're doing today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Bryn. I have over 15 years of animal care experience, but right now I am studying canine and feline nutrition, but I also have interests in the holistic care, raising, maintenance of companion animals. And as always, my sources will be in the description. All right, so this list is in no particular order. All of these things should not be fed to ferrets for various reasons. So the first one, we are going to start off with something that you are probably not familiar with, uncooked shellfish, like like mussels and oysters. Now, I am a huge advocate for feeding a little bit of weekly shellfish, but raw shellfish should always be cooked prior to feeding to avoid the risk of Toxoplasma gondii, which is a parasite found in shellfish. And it can also be found in unwashed fruits, contaminated water, it's in a bunch of different places. The risk is still quite slim, of course, and most mussels are already cooked when you buy them at the store. So if they're sold half shell or no shell, they are already cooked. If they are whole shell, so if they're closed and same with oysters, they need to be cooked prior to you feeding them and they need to be cooked to open them up anyways to get the meat out, so. Number two, rancid fish oils. I am very passionate on this topic, as you know. A lot of ferret owners feed fish oils, particularly salmon oil, and I can't tell you the amount of ferret owners who are feeding rancid salmon oil without even realizing it. Omega-3 is extremely fragile and it breaks down the second it hits oxygen and light. And this happens during manufacturing, rendering, and packaging processes, so it already starts that before you even get the fish oil, and it will continue to degrade and denature itself as you use it. If you have a pump feature on the bottle or if you don't keep it in the fridge, it will continue to deteriorate even further, leaving you with potential very toxic oil. This can create inflammation, free radical damage, and even cancer when fed long term. Some fish oil with the terms wild or Alaskan may only include a small amount of what they say, and then the rest can be just other random farmed fish of other species. I do recommend feeding a little bit of raw fish in the week, but not oil. If you feed dry food, you can feed freeze-dried fish weekly. Just make sure that it is low in mercury and that it is sweet worst well. This is also very important. Number three, meat from wild carnivores. This can be like bears, foxes, coyotes, raccoons, as the chance of parasites are much higher in these kinds of animals because they are higher up in the food chain. Along with the issue of biomagnification, which means because of their position on the food chain, they will just have higher amounts of toxins due to their diet. And to go along with that, meat from predatory fish like shark, tuna, which we will talk more about later in the video, along with swordfish should also be avoided. These fish are higher in the aquatic food chain and will have higher amounts of mercury and other toxins. Number five, corn. Along with all grains, corn especially should not be fed. It's probably one of the worst grains that you could feed a ferret. This grain is found in many foods fed to ferrets, such as marshals, sunseed, shepherd and green, purina one kitten, and wild harvest. This is used as a cheap protein over actual animal product. Issue with corn is it's not biologically appropriate. Ferrets are not designed to digest and benefit from grains of any kind. Corn is also high in carbs, making it a high glycemic food, meaning it has a huge chance of affecting your ferret's blood sugar levels, contributing to things like pancreatic cancer and other cancer because we all know that sugar feeds cancer. Corn is also commonly contaminated with glyphosate and aflatoxins, other toxic molds. Number six, going back to predatory fish, I have tuna on the list because 
tuna is very commonly fed to our obligate carnivores at home. This is because tuna is so addictive. Carnivores love it. But the issue is tuna is a high mercury fish because it's higher up in the food chain. It will lead to mercury poisoning if you're feeding an inappropriate amount of tuna, which a lot of people do. Number seven, we have wild boar. In the US and Europe specifically, it is advised to avoid feeding wild boar due to pseudorabies. Pseudorabies is a viral disease that affects swine all over the world. Pseudorabies is fatal to cats and dogs and there is currently no treatment for it. It's also resistant to freezing, but keep in mind that this disease does not affect commercial pigs in US and also most of Canada, don't quote me on that, but in places like Europe, many people don't feel comfortable feeding pork because of it and that is totally okay there are a bunch of other options for proteins out there that you could use instead but here in the states and canada our pork is mostly safe number eight onions onions in significant amounts can actually break down the red blood cells in obligate carnivores contributing to anemia this can occur when feeding small amounts over a large period of time for example baby foods some of them contain onion powder or actual onions and many people like to use baby food with elderly or sick ferrets, so keep this in mind, along with feeding a very large amount in one sitting. Let's say your ferret gets into onion powder on their own or gets into your food that has onions in it. Although onions are super yummy and one of my most favorite things to eat, keep them away from your ferrets. If you live in an area where chronic wasting disease or CWD is present, you might want to avoid feeding deer and elk. CWD is a disease that affects both deer and elk and is similar to mad cow disease. Feeding farmed and wild vegetables venison can be very beneficial to ferrets and if you have access to that, I do recommend feeding it. If you live in an area where this disease is present, do not feed the head, spine, or spleen of the animal. And make sure that you are freezing for at least three weeks prior to feeding. Patsu is back for number 10, foods with carcinogenic preservatives. This is way more common than you may think, such as Marshall's, Missouri Ferret Diet, and KT Fiesta Ferret. They may appear on the label as BHA, BHT, propylene glycol, and also ethoxyquin. You may also find them in ferret treats such as bandits by Marshalls. BHA and BHT are carcinogenic based on animal experimentation. BHA causes papillomas and squamous cell carcinomas of the fore stomach, and BHT causes tumors in the liver. Ethoxyquin is sometimes used to preserve ingredients such as fish meal, but the dangerous part about ethoxyquin is that it doesn't have to be on the label because it's preserving a certain ingredient it's not preserving the food itself, so it's not required to be on the label. The only way that you can find out if your food contains ethoxyquin is if you call and speak with the manufacturer. Ethoxyquin is not permitted for human consumption. It has been associated with liver, kidney, and thyroid damage, as well as allergic reactions, skin and hair abnormalities, reproductive dysfunction, embryonic mutations, and carcinogenic effects. It is not permitted for use in Australian dog foods, nor is it approved within the European Union. Propylene glycol is banned for cat consumption because it causes anemia. So it's safe to say that we should also avoid this for ferrets because ferrets and cats are both very similar. Number 11 is not exactly a food item, but I wanted to include it on the list anyways, and that is lilies. All parts of the lily are extremely toxic to cats, so again, we can assume that it's the same thing for ferrets. Consuming any part of the lily, along with even just consuming a little bit of the pollen, is enough to cause kidney failure in a few short days. Again, while we don't exactly know the effects of lilies on ferrets, best to just keep them completely out of reach or opt out of having lilies in your home. Number 12, peanut butter. I don't understand people's desires for feeding ferrets peanut butter, but I do see it a lot on Instagram and Facebook ferret groups. Peanut butter contains a lot of fat and carbohydrates. It is not biologically appropriate and it has no nutritional value for cats and ferrets. It's also a choking hazard because of its thick texture. It's also commonly contaminated with toxic molds, aflatoxin. Some brands also contain the sugar substitute xylitol in their peanut butter, which is very, very bad for both cats and dogs. 
snacks. Nuts in general shouldn't be fed to obligate carnivores, especially macadamia nuts because they are very toxic. Number 13, avocado. We all know by now that fruits and vegetables, all of them, are just not appropriate for ferret consumption, but I did recently see a clip of someone feeding their ferret uh, avocado. I figured I would add it to the list because clearly some people still do not know this. Avocado is actually mildly toxic to cats, so again we can assume either it's the same or very similar for ferrets. The leaves, seed, tree bark, and fruit itself contain something called persin, which can trigger vomiting and diarrhea. Number 14, a bit of a weird one, but cinnamon and nutmeg. Nutmeg contains a toxin that I'm not even going to try to pronounce, I will put it up here on the screen. Small amounts may not be a big issue, may only cause a little bit of GI upset. If a large amount is ingested, it can cause increased heart rate, high blood pressure, dry mouth, seizures, and more. Symptoms can last up to 48 hours. Cinnamon in large amounts can create low blood sugar, liver disease, vomiting, diarrhea, and heart rate changes. Sometimes just inhaling the stuff on accident is enough to trigger these in dogs and cats. It can cause choking and other respiratory issues as well. Again, Again, these are harmful in large amounts and you most likely wouldn't find it in your average ferret food but just something to keep in mind especially around the holiday season when we are using a lot of these spices ferrets are of course smaller than cats and dogs so the amount that would be toxic for them is going to be much smaller for ferrets and lastly we have a bit of a no-brainer and that is moldy kibble but you'd be surprised many people are not aware that they are unintentionally feeding their pets moldy food. This is because the mold may not be visibly present until you hit the middle of the bag or even at the very bottom of the bag and by that point it is already too late and you've been feeding contaminated food this entire time. Mold can cause disorientation, liver dysfunction, coma, and even death. It is serious stuff and yes raw foods and wet foods can also grow mold but many people I think have this assumption that when they feed dry food they are perfectly safe from pathogenic bacteria like salmonella and E. coli, even though that's not true, and mold, which is also not true. While I am not an advocate for kibble feeding for carnivores, if you are going to feed it, make sure that you are following proper storage practices, which I will have links on how to do that below. If you want to learn more about what your ferrets should eat and how you can prepare it in your own home, check out my raw feeding playlist. My what do ferrets eat video is a great place to start if you're new. That is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to all of our channel members and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.